So in light of everything that's happened with Ian Bellina and so many other cryptocurrency traders, we are doing a video on security. We're gonna look at the top four options to secure your coins and go over the pros and cons of each one. Here we go. Hey there, YouTube, and welcome to Altcoin Picks. I am so excited to bring this to you. I've never done a video on security. And today I'm super excited to bring this one to you because I just bought something special. I will show you in the third section that we'll be talking about. I, I wanna rephrase what I said earlier. It's not really the top choices, but the top four most popular choices in my opinion and what I've been reading in terms of where you're gonna secure your coins and what we should do. Anyways, don't forget to smash that subscribe button the more subscribers, the better. I love you guys. Let's grow this community. And of course, if you love this video, please smash that like button. So first we're gonna look at this article. Hackers keep robbing cryptocurrency YouTubers. Ian Bellina was the latest victim who lost almost $2 million in cryptocurrency. That is so much money. That is life changing money. That is ridiculous. Now it's not just YouTubers. If you go into the various Facebook groups, like SEM, I see all the time people complaining that they lost their coins because of some ridiculous scam they fell for, importing their private key and just losing everything just for a few thousand coins and like expire, which is worth nothing. That is crazy to me. But YouTubers are kind of getting front and stage because we have a platform. So when something like this happens, many, many people find out about it. So, so yeah, <laughs> YouTubers, be careful. So Ian Bellina, as you can see, would always post portfolio snapshots. He was just giving way too much information. I'm trying to get into a more security mindset because I don't want to lose my money, of course. I never really show anything. I don't go on exchanges. I don't try to show any information about myself. And it's because I don't want to lose my money. <laughs> Either way, with that being said, let's get going on the best ways to protect your funds from hackers. Before we start though, I want to give you a few definitions so first, what is a public key? So of course, many of you already know this, but a public key is an address you use to receive coins from anywhere else. You can share this safely without worrying about losing any of your coins. Think of it as like a bank account at which you receive money from others. You don't have to worry about giving this to people because they can't grab your funds with this number or with this phrase. Now your private key. So your private key, as it says here, secret key, is a randomly generated unique number that you should never, ever give to anyone. And I want to stress that more than anything. You never give this to anyone. If you lose your private key, you lose all your coins. Simple as that. If someone gains access or learns your private key, they can pretty much recover your account and essentially have access to all your money. So the first wallet we're gonna talk about is My Ether Wallet or Mew. So Mew is essentially a website that lets you create an Ethereum wallet where you can store, send, and receive ERC20 tokens. Unlike most wallets though, with Mew, you do not create a wallet on the platform servers. Instead, you create it on your computer. So this is super important because all the data is stored on your computer. So you are responsible for safely backing up your wallet. So what are the pros and cons? It's compatible with other cold wallets such as Trezor, Ledger Nano, and it's also compatible with MetaMask. It's also secure and allows easy access to the Ethereum blockchain, which is what most ICOs are used with right now. So it's super easy to jump in ICOs with Mew. It's very user-friendly and many new people, including myself, start with Mew because it's so simple to use. Next, it's free. Although we have many thousands of dollars, some of us hundreds of thousands of dollars, we still seem to like that free option. And then finally, and a huge pro that you should be looking at no matter what, is you completely control your private key. That is huge, super important. Make sure if you're gonna pick any of these, you control your private key 100%. So what are the cons? The cons, it's not as secure as Ledger, so it's not as, it's not as secure as a cold wallet pretty much. Only ERC20 tokens, so you cannot store your Bitcoin, your Dash, your Ripple, all those other tokens. And they don't have a two-factor authentication. I feel like that's super important. I wish they did have it. I think that would add a new level of security that would really help in securing your coins. Next, we have MetaMask. And I honestly think this is maybe even a little more popular than Mew. This one is so simple to use. I've used this 
time and time again. So MetaMask is a hot online wallet browser extension, mostly used with Google Chrome. It's a hot wallet because it's used online, which is considered a less secure way of storing your coins. There's no login, so you do not store your private key on a server. Instead, it is kept in Chrome with password protection. Also, you see right here, Chrome extension, super easy to use. I love that about this. So what are the pros and cons? It's by far the easiest way to set up a wallet, even easier than Mew. Of course, again, it's free. <laughs> And this one's huge right here. They have a blacklist of malicious sites and MetaMask will actually block you from entering that site. This actually happened with Ether Delta when they got hacked. I'm sure many of you remember that. MetaMask completely blocked the site from being accessed. Next, it's easily accessible to decentralized exchanges. So IDEX, Ether Delta, you can easily transfer your coins back and forth with MetaMask. And the source code is actually on GitHub so you can check it and make sure it's secure and they keep updating it and it's where it should be. <laughs> so the cons, it's less secure. There's no multi-signature, only ERC-20 tokens. So again, no Bitcoin, no Ripple, no Dash. And they also do not have a two-factor authentication. I feel like, again, that's such a big thing. I wish, please, MetaMask, Mew, get this in there. Now my next one, in one I'm super excited about, the ne Ledger Nano S. And as you can see, I just got one. Sorry. <laughs> I haven't opened it yet, but I'm super excited to just move all my coins there, <laughs> just be so much more secure. So Nano S is a hardware wallet, meaning it's the most secure way to store your coins. They guarantee and provide an unrivaled safety. And of course, safety is the number one concern for all of us. So Nano S works offline. They are not vulnerable to online hacks and thefts. It's also a multi-currency wallet allowing you to store Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Zcash, Ripple, Dash, Stratus, Arc, Neo, Quantum, Pivx, and much more, actually. So what are the pros? Security. High-end security features. Inbuilt display allows a crypto owner to check and validate all transactions. That is a huge feature. Check it out. More info if you need it. Let me know. I'll comment or in my Discord. It's easy to use and super reliable. Tamper-proof environment guaranteeing safety of all your cryptocurrencies. It's a multi-coin wallet, as I just mentioned above, and it's compatible with multiple platforms such as Mew. The cons, it's expensive. Outside of that, I would love to hear what you think the cons are for the Nano S. Now our last, but certainly not least, is the Trezor. I think I'm saying that right, I hope so. It's a hardware wallet similar to the Nano S. It provides storage and advanced security for your cryptocurrencies and private keys. It's basically a small computer designed to protect your private keys from possible online and offline risk. It does this by keeping your private key away from the internet and confirms the transactions in the device. So Trezor is impervious to virtually any attack, so you can actually connect Trezor to an infected computer and still be able to have 100% control over your funds in the device. So similar to the Nano S, Trezor supports many coins, not just ERC-20, including Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Dash, Zcash, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, and of course, as I said, ERC-20 tokens, which Nano S covers all these also. So what are the pros and cons? Pros, password and private key encryption two-factor authentication for online accounts, message verification features, and it's pretty much better for cryptocurrency holders. So if you're gonna hold your coins for a long time, this is a great wallet to have. So the cons, it's expensive, kind of like the Nano S, and it's not an on-the-go device, meaning you shouldn't be using it for daily transactions. So that's my video on security. Let me know what you think of those four choices. Which one are you in? I'm sure many of us are not securing our coins like we should. Make sure you never put your private key on your email. Write it down, hide it, don't keep it on your computer. Secure your crypto, secure your money. If you had $30,000 in your bank account, you wouldn't be just throwing around your bank account, password and username like that, right? Keep this and hide it. Protect yourself, don't lose your money. Don't be like Ian Bellina and all the other people that are losing their stuff. Be secure, pay a little bit of money, like a hundred bucks if you need to, to make your crypto as secure as possible. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button. And of course, smash that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.